Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on um, a bit of a retro thing, um, which is my copy of Imperial Armour Volume 3 from the Forge World section of Games Workshop. Um, now, just a bit of history about the Imperial Armour range, and that is that um, initially they did two books, one on um, Imperial Guard vehicles, um, they're now obviously known as the um, Astra Militarum, and then they did a second one on Space Marine vehicles, which are now known as the um, Adeptus Astartes. Um, but for their third book, they decided that they were no longer just going to do plain vehicle or equipment lists. And what they did was they did a campaign. Um, now, this book was first published in 2005. Uh, I don't know which version of um, Warhammer 40k was playing then. I think it may have been 5th or 6th edition, something like that. Um, but the book itself, um, it's a lovely tome. Uh, at the time it was pricey, I think it was about 45, 50 pounds, something like that. Um, but it's 100% glossy pages throughout, uh, a lot of colour plates, a lot of um, technical drawings of vehicles, etc. And there's a lot of thought gone into this particular uh, book. So opening it up, it's done in sections, and the first section being the history of the Taros campaign. Um, so this Imperial Armour is called uh, the Taros campaign, and it's basically about the Tau um, taking over the planet of Taros and the Imperium finding out about it. So straight away you can see the um, quality of the paper that they used. It's very thick, it's nice, and this straight off you've got an example of some of the coloured artwork that they have produced in this book. Um, so the first part of the book, History of the Taurus Campaign, just basically de deals with the road to war, the first intervention, the invasion by the Imperium to retake the planet, um, some various um, campaigns which then took place within that invasion, such as the um, hunt for one of their uh, one of the Tau uh, ethereals. Um, so there was a, a, I believe, a if I remember rightly, a um, assassin uh, sent out to try and kill. Uh, the, the ethereal. Um, there was a raid on a um, imperial airbase by Tau hunter carders. There was also a drop troop um, campaign uh, on a chemical works, and all of these are detailed in this history section. Um, if we just go through. The book um, as I say there's lo there's lots of artwork and these again there's some black and white drawings of um, what Taros looks like for the um, everyday imperial servant um, working on Taros uh, some of the um, buildings mine shafts uh, there's a um, landing pit shown and part of the governor's residence um, shown there. Um, then goes into the first Taros intervention uh, which involves the um, Space Marine chapter called the Avenging Sons uh, and that's the first um, incident and looking at again some of the artwork that's been produced just detailing the Avenging Sons um, chapter uh, you can see they've got um, a Venerable Dreadnought or a Mark IV Dreadnought, um, then a Mark V Dreadnought, drop pods and a Thunderhawk gunship. 
Now, if I move on, the other thing that I like about the Imperial Armour books is that they will call out um, within the pages, they'll take a character. Um, so when they got trounced on the first intervention, uh, the Imperial Man came back with the Raptors Space Marine chapter uh, and the Talan um, Desert Raiders, uh, Acadian uh, arm, um, armed forces and the Elysian drop troops amongst others. So they've called out a example of a Raptors Space Marine um, and they just basically go into the equipment used and um, you know the armor and the backpack and stuff like this and it's just little things like this within the Imperial Armor range which makes these books so good you know as far as I'm concerned the other thing that they do is you will see that they do a lot of these unit organizations so the Raptors chapter Strike Force Aurelius on the Taras campaign and it details you know who what units were involved the strength the um, ships that were used the vehicles the number of troops whether they were devastator squads whether they were jump troops whether they were bog standard infantry um, and they do these chapter lists uh, these unit lists throughout the book um, and again at the very back you'll see um, more um, uh, chapter, uh, unit organization lists as well. One of the things I do like about the way that Ford World did these books was a lot of their artwork are actual models um, and so they're, they're making a diorama and then they photograph the models um, and make it look like they are photographs from um, the campaign. Um, again, another call out is this Krut Narlock Rider. Um, Krut being one of the um, allies for the Tau. Um, and I don't think you can get the, the Narlocks any longer on the Forge World website. There's a lot of stuff that Forge World has stopped doing, which is a real shame. Um, it would be nice if they would, you know, perhaps have a, as, an, as a suggestion, Forge World, perhaps you could have a service whereby um, somebody could place an order obviously pay for it in advance and then you cast it for them and send it out uh, that way you don't have to have um, that much in stock um, say like if say you had a a, a, a back catalogue of ranges that you've had previously um, and then again there's another call out for Tau Fire Warrior just basically detailing um, his pulse carbine uh, and his armour etc so moving through the book, as I say, the color plates are gorgeous and you see a lot of different things. Um, there's an awful lot on the tower weaponry and then there's the Imperial Navy are shown as well, as well as uh, these are vehicles from the Talan uh, regiments. Um, Tau Barracudas, this is the original um, styling. Um, I believe that there's a new style available that they've come up with. One of the things that I liked about this campaign was the inclusion of the Elysian Drop Troops, the 23rd Regiment of the Elysian Drop Troops. Um, and that's basically uh, came in with the Valkyrie uh, transports and the Vulture gunships. And before you could get the Valkyrie as a plastic kit, they were resin from Ford's World. And for this one, um, it's basically, the scenario is a um, attack on a hydro processing plant. 
doesn't go well uh, for the Imperials. But again, um, within the story arc, it was fantastic. Um, the other thing that, again, they include in this is they show a map of the hydro processing plant, which I'm sure would make a lovely um, gaming board should anyone decide that they want to perhaps take that on. I don't have the space where I am at the moment, but um, it would be nice to see something like that or ideas taken from this um, as a baseboard. One of the colour plates that I liked, um, and this is essentially a copy of the artwork that's on the front of the book. So that's on the front. Um, and it just shows a couple of mantas and a devil fish going off into battle. So at the end of the um, history, basically, of the Taros campaign, um, there are a few um, colour plates. Um, some of the uh, Raptor Space Marine uh, vehicles and insignia, and then some more towel. Now, the next main section, it goes into vehicles of. So the first section is vehicles of the towel, and this covers basically a lot of the stuff that you would find within the Tau Codex. Um, I believe at the time the Tau were fairly new to Games Workshop when this book was first published. So it just goes through the Hammerhead variants, the Devil Fish, uh, the Skyray missile defense uh, gunships, and then it goes into crisis battle suits. Um, there are some character battle suits within these pages and I do own a couple of them um, and it introduced the broadside battle suit um, and Forge World did a variant of the four of the broadside battle suit which was uh, a very lovely kit indeed. Um, it introduced the Tetra Scout speeder that was available on Forge World, I don't know if it still is, and then obviously the Piranha light skimmer which is now uh, a plastic kit. Heavy gun drones, sentry turrets, and then we're into the aircraft. So we get details for the Barracudas, uh, as well as the Tiger Shark, the Orca Dropship, which is basically an assault troop transport, and the very impressive Tau Manta, which I believe you still can get on Forge World, and is it's got to be at least about a thousand pounds now. Um, and again, all the rules at the time, 2005. We then go into the um, other stuff that they include in this was things like Battle Fleet, Battle Fleet Gothic uh, rules and um, stuff for Tau. So you could you could do a whole campaign fighting in system in space. So you do the Void War as well as the ground campaign. Um, we then go into the allies, so we've got the Kroot, um, and a bit later on there are some rules, some early rules for Tau human auxiliaries. Obviously the next section then is vehicles of the Imperium. There's an awful lot of Imperial Guard uh, units here, and they include lots of the heavy um, bombardment uh, vehicles, self-propelled guns, as well as the drop sentinels that were used by the uh, Elysian drop troops, and as well as some other flyers like the Aquila Lander, I believe the Thunderhawk transporter, and then it's also got some information on the Warhammer Titan. Now, the next section, as I said earlier, there's unit organisations. And again, this is, the way it's laid out is um, nicely done. So for example, we've got the 17th Talan Regiment, and it gives you basically a table of organisation, or what, what in real life would be called order of battle. Um, and it lists all the vehicles, etc. 
um, for that, as well as the 17th Talan Regiment Light Infantry Company. We then have the 12th Talan Armoured Regiment, Table of Organisation, Order of Battle. Um, there's some nice examples of a Talan tank company and how it's uh, laid out. And then we have the 23rd Illusion, Elysian Drop Troop Regiment, Table of Organisation, Order of Battle. And it gives the regimental order of battle and then it gives the order of battle for a drop infantry company. So again, you know, the um, organisation charts, 114th Canadian Regiment mechanised. We then go into the Tau. And we've got the Tau contingent of uh, El Shieldi, um projected table of organisation, six hunter carders, and it tells you what was in it. And then a, another hunter carder, and then an air carder. Uh, example. We then go into army lists um, and straight off with this we've got the Elysian 23rd Regiment drop troop and this basically is a mini codex for the Elysian drop troops. Um, goes through everything, elite troops, uh, fast attack, heavy support. Uh, we've then got some information on Talan Imperial Guard, uh, Tau Auxiliary Forces, and then it goes into the Tau in the old epic um, Armageddon uh, game that Games Workshop did. We then go into scenarios. So for everything that was in the history, you can play it as a scenario. So you've got um, Battlefleet Gothic, the Denab incident, which was a void uh, incident, void warfare incident involving the Imperial Fleet and the Tau Fleet. Um, you've then got the second scenario, which was the first intervention, which was the attack on the Governor's Palace, where the Avenging Sons attempted to um, arrest and extract the uh, planetary governor. We've within that there are some other uh, assaults that took place. So you've got um, assaults on missile uh, centres, and then we get into um, the uh, invasion as well and the encounters at the uh, Tunguska station. You've got the Battle of Gyeramak, uh, Knights Raiders um, and what this does is it, it lists the forces um, for uh, friendly forces and enemy forces and it gives you brief objectives um, and any special rules. So um, the whole scenario plays out and again we've got Battlefleet Gothic um, scenarios. Um, the battle for Hydro Plant uh, 2330 is here with the Elysian drop troops. Um, there's the uh, Iracunda breakthrough where they were using the Warhound Titans and um, the Operation Deathblow which used the uh, Imperial Assassin and finally we come towards the end of the book and the appendices and within the appendices you've just got basically rules for um, at the time uh, super heavy vehicles, flyers, death from the skies and then some Tau vehicle colour marking schemes. And at the very end, we have a very nice size comparison um, of all the vehicles uh, that uh, all the basic vehicles that were used throughout the campaign on both sides. So, 
Imperial Armour Volume 3, The Taros Campaign. It's a lovely book. Um, I got mine second hand. Uh, I couldn't get um, uh, a brand new one. Um, but I have had it for quite some time. And I love this book. Um, the Imperial Armour range, as I say, were fantastically done. Um, and even though they're a little bit pricey, I feel that they're worth the money. And if you can pick up a second-hand copy um, and then obviously just tweak the rules for the latest edition of Warhammer uh, or, you know, Aeronautica or whatever, then I feel that you can play a campaign from start to finish um, and have a, a, a great deal of fun with it. So I hope you like this. Uh, I will be doing some more. I do have some other Imperial Armour books I will go through. So join me next time and hopefully we'll be doing something new. All right, bye-bye.